Hello everyone and um happy Saturday. <clears throat> welcome uh welcome to another stream. Hey uh Lanigan, hey Imran, welcome, welcome. Uh so hopefully uh you all had a, a good week and uh hopefully the weekend is uh treating you even better. So welcome. Um as usual uh, I like to go uh, over some of the updates uh, for some of the stuff that I worked over the week. And um, let's put this to the side. This is a little fun little project. Uh, I'll show you when we go into kind of the main level and um, uh, kind of some of the updates happening over there. So yeah, the, let's, uh, let's jump into game and um, we'll go over kind of the the updates from a from a gameplay perspective. Um, so right now, as usual, you know, picking up the weapon. Uh, I fixed a couple of things around the weapon itself. So right now it has like a little bit of a um, this. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you call the these attachments, uh, but yeah, once you once you go into ADS, the the crosshair goes away, and you get this little just like a little pointer. Uh, just to kind of you know clear out the uh, clear out the screen, and um, the other thing that I worked on was uh, when it comes to firing, to make sure that uh, when you when you hit this guy, uh, so let's go a little closer. You'll hit that. You'll see that on the side. It tells you what uh, what bone it hit, and yeah, if if I just uh, you know uh, just hit at random, it it takes some of, some of his life, but then if I uh, if I go for like a headshot, uh, then it's uh, it's it's an instant kill. Uh, there is still a little bit of uh, so the gun has a recoil, and uh, so if you if you keep firing on like automatic, so like right now it's just like this is what's happening, and um, and uh, but but it's it's accurate. So wherever you're pointing, that's where it shoots. If you're uh, just shooting like off the hip, you'll see that uh, it doesn't always land in the same spot where the um, where the the crosshair is pointing. Uh, also adjusted a little bit for the uh, uh, for the magazine. So yeah, let's just quickly quickly reload. And um, one of the uh, the uh, the most fun I've had is kind of with the with the water surface. So right now, this is kind of how it behaves when you when you shoot the water. So that's always uh, fun to to do. Um, okay, and uh, that's kind of like the uh, from from the the more of the front facing aspect of uh, of the the game. Uh, on the back end, I've uh, Finally managed to switch over to the enhanced uh, input. So right now, um, if you were to go, if you if you're working on a project and you go to your project settings, uh, if you have like an older project that might have gotten migrated, um, you'll see that uh, you get this message here with the uh, axis and action mappings are not deprecated. So uh, for that, uh, I've spent some time this week to switch over to the um, uh, enhanced input. Along with that, uh, also some part of the week was uh, kind of uh, focused around uh, the characters. So right now they have a bunch of outfits, so we'll try some of them on. Another thing that I've done is I decided to use one skeleton uh, for and you you know with um, with a couple of different material depending on the on the skin um, uh, the the skin complexion or uh, the skin color and uh, so they they all use this uh, kind of uh, starts off from white so then you know for the hands and then I can tint that to to match as closely as possible uh, to uh, to the face. Because you know you we're not gonna look at somebody's hands, but we're gonna look at the face. So uh, if this one is pretty close, uh, I, I call it good, and that way I only have uh, the materials to to deal with, and uh, and not every single um, 
skeleton that uh, and you know there are materials that get generated with uh, uh, with each individual metahuman. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the clothes. Uh, like right now, this one is uh, just one piece, and I, I intend to break it into two because you know the pants and the shoes are pretty decent. They turn out okay. But uh, let's uh, let's try on a few other ones. So we'll do a little bit of uh, modeling type of thing here. So uh, let's start off with uh, kind of just like a denim jacket, and uh, and I think I might need to re-export this one for this uh, new body. And so and then there's the pants. Actually, so I wanted to do the jacket and the pants. So that's kind of how it looks. That's, I would say, you know, one outfit. Uh, then uh, let's see, there's uh, another example of a jacket. Uh, where is it? Here. So here's another example. And these can go into like an array that, uh, you know, I can at runtime, you know, dress the people up. Uh, that could actually provide a little bit of variety through different playthroughs like this guy is dressed a little bit different than before and or like my previous play or something like that uh, uh yeah atlantica it's definitely better it's just very confusing especially when you get started like i was very frustrated the first uh the first day when i started looking into it because it's got yeah it's got this uh, th these more options for uh for it but um uh, when you first set it up, when you first go into it, it's just uh, pretty confusing. So, but uh, but yeah, it, it it ended up working out okay. Hey, girl, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of more, a few more. I got like a couple of dozens of these, and uh, so I just wanted to uh, to show some of them to to y'all. Uh, let's see, this is another one for some jackets, and of course, you know the jackets overly on top of the pants so that way you know you can there can be like multiple combinations uh let's see i think this one was a pretty cool jacket uh it turned out okay uh there's a i have a couple of number of pants as well uh so for example something like that and you know once you once you alternate between all of these it could provide quite a decent uh, uh decent variety so to speak so you know kind of just some like sweatpants kind of thing this guy looks like he's uh he's a cool dude hey hisham welcome welcome all right so let's see maybe a couple of pants what else um all right these ones are some pretty cool ones as well um maybe some there's some sweatpants in here i think there we go a um, couple of t-shirts maybe Um, and also for the women, there is like a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of different ones, uh, that would look kind of like this, you know, so if we dress this one up as well, this character and add some pants, there we go. So, um, so yeah, once you, uh, once you jump into game mode and you are to like interact with them, you know, the, 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 uh, the clothes, you know, match the, uh, match the motion or the animations. So yeah, this one turned out okay for this jacket as well. Um, yeah, so that's the other update, uh, that uh, I did spend some time in exporting these, um, uh, uh these things over and um but it, you know it was kind of just grunt work pretty repetitive you know kind of used uh, this meta tailor app that i had to to match the, the clothing that i got from sketchfab onto the body and then exporting it you know apply materials and all that so you know times that a couple of dozen gets tiresome <laughs> um the metahumans here is the most intensive thing. It is, and that's why my metahumans start at LOD2, and uh, I use hair cards. I don't use like the 
the, the intensive uh, type of uh, mesh behind it. Um, okay, yes. So the other thing, let me see what else. So that's kind of from like the mechanic standpoint, uh, the variety and, uh, you know, kind of adding some, some, some different variety on these characters, you know, so like right now they, they have like completely different outfits. Um, of course, there's some that are completely just female oriented outfits, you know, like this one. Uh, but, uh, but most of them are pretty, uh, there can be shared. So it's not, uh, and that's why I'm saying I'm using, this one is using the same, the same, uh, tall underweight uh, skeleton uh, as this one and uh, like I said the only difference would be in uh, like uh, the color tint for here from for him um, will have to match the face but again having having an upper body outfit you don't really you can't tell that easily the transition between them like the the difference in that the color is not the same you know like I try to get this one as close to this one as possible but if it's not, you know, 100% close, uh, it's still gonna, it's not gonna be um, very easy to tell that, you know, that uh, the tints are different. So I think um, it, that that makes makes it a lot easier <laughs> for for all the characters, uh, the interactable ones, to just share the same the same body. And you know, if I want to make them smaller, I can just re resize them basically. You know, so. Um, but most of them are gonna just w work off with the same uh, the same skeleton. Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, so that was kind of uh, the, the some of the main updates I would say. Let's jump into the main level, and there's some updates in there as well as um, some of the things that I've worked on this uh, this past week. Uh, Imran, I do not stream on Twitch. I think I've started with Twitch, but uh, as of late, Twitch, I've, I've mentioned this before, Twitch is kind of like a, it's kind of a, a bridge between before like the, the site uh, uh, that has that, sig uh, that uh, very well-known ding to it, you know? <laughs> Hopefully you know what side I'm, side I'm talking about, but it's kind of like like a, an adult site. <laughs> uh, so that's why I didn't really want it to stream on Twitch as much, um, you know. And also, m most of my subscribers are here on YouTube, and it's a lot more convenient. I know there's like some methods that you can do the, um, what was I going to say, like uh, this, the, 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 the upload of the video once you're done with it on Twitch, but but yeah, I mean I, I just don't like where where Twitch has been heading recently, you know. It it started off as mostly just gaming, and and now it's just like, you know, the stuff that I just mentioned and then political commentary. So I'm yeah, I know that happens on YouTube as well. YouTube is you know, but uh, I don't know. I think it's a wider platform for YouTube. So yeah. Yeah, there you go, Hisham. Exactly. That's what you're gonna have. Uh, th those, um, those uh, that that um, what is it? Not hair strand, but uh, uh, yeah, those grooms. They they're very very um, com not complex, but uh, uh, taxing. Okay, so here's a, a few more updates. And um, you might have seen from some older videos of mine that I was working on uh, these um, these kind of like guarding trucks, right? That you won't be able to get past them. I mean, once they detect you, they fire really quick and uh, the damage is really big. So you, you pretty much, you end up dead. Uh, but what I had done for, for one of these is, uh, let me see, I hope this is, one of them as well um so i've done it in a in a way that uh however you place it the wheels are are going to be dynamic so they're going to be placed on like the surface next to them so for example if i move this up you know the wheels still stay on that surface right so i can like tilt it to the side or like add some varieties in it and the wheels also just uh, stick to the surface and um while that one's more of a 
I would say like a uh, interactive truck. You know, there's going to be some uh, other trucks in the world, uh, you know, related to kind of the enemies that are just going to be static. They don't do anything. And um, I've kind of done gone about doing this a similar thing for for these ones as well. So this one, uh, what you'll see is uh, let me see where is my thing that has a similar uh, a similar thing happening to it. And let me see if I tilt it to the side, you'll see that uh, the wheels get planted on the ground. Depending on it's not as dynamic as the other one because the way that this is done is via the the skeletal mesh so this truck is actually a skeleton and uh, what I'm doing when I'm refreshing I'm just um, repositioning these bones to be like on the surface uh, so that was uh, one of the other updates that I wanted to share with you guys it's it's uh, if anybody's interested in doing something like this I can show you the blueprint um, along with that was uh, I've reworked some of these electrical poles uh, so that um, you know the previous that the previous one that I had was actually the mesh itself was made out of uh, two materials you know so two draw calls so now with this one it's only one material per, per pole and so therefore just one draw call I was trying to optimize it that way and also what I did is uh, I've made it so that I can change the mesh of it, like if it's a, um, uh, a side street. So for example, if it's a side street or not, you know, it's going to link into this little transformer. So therefore, you know, not carrying all the, all the cables up the street and just like just one of them. Um, so, so yeah, that was, uh, and using the same, the same asset basically that was a, a this was another update another one was also around the houses and um, you'll notice that now there's like a little bit of uh, some stairs going up here and um, um, I've uh, kind of worked it out a little bit better so the entrance is not like this fancy type of mansion entrance that I've had before and I'm just reusing the same kind of uh, stairs that I have in my uh, in that uh, in this little apartment building back there uh, yes uh, along with that what I did is I started kind of hacking away at this package uh, this package of houses because uh, it's it's really awesome the, the, some things that bother me is uh, and I get it for nanite this is fine when when this is done like this I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell but uh, this one's got geometry for each one of these like slats and um, I, I'm not very uh, a big fan of that especially since it's not needed even with nanite this is completely handled by the normal I would I bet it would look almost identical once I turn this into a flat surface uh, so that's what I did uh, for this I turned these into flat into like flat surfaces because this was only, uh, as you can see, you know, you can now you can see the that this is actually a mesh, but this only works with um, this type of siding, you know, like horizontal siding. But I wanted to add a little bit bit of variety in this section where the um, where the where the roof is, you know, making that um, so that so that I, so that I can change that per you know individual house. And you know maybe this this house can have like horizontal siding. This one can have vertical. And previously with this type of a mesh, you know, due to its horizontal setup, uh, that's not possible. And um, so I'm gonna go be going about doing that, and uh, probably also exporting these uh, these blueprints and uh, turning them into a singular mesh, just to hopefully further optimize it as well. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Mokal, hello, welcome, welcome. Hisham, are you switching to Nanite? I am not switching to Nanite. Uh, I don't have any reasons for it at the moment, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that was the other update from like the level design part of thing. You'll see that I've added a couple of more uh, things around here just to kind of uh, complete the, the world a little bit. You know, these, these, uh, these big... Uh, line carriers I'm not entirely sure what you call these 
for these uh, these big electrical poles. And uh, kind of the the more fun part of it comes now. So let's uh, I'm gonna move this over here. And remember, I've mentioned something about a basement a while back. Well, let's take a look at it. You'll see there's the entrance. And and now let's go into the basement and uh, and we'll uh, we'll also look at that cabinet, that arcade that I've just shown you in the beginning. Uh, Imran, yes, I am using Lumen. I am, yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons for that little <laughs> message there at the top with uh, your memory has been exhausted because I have like a, a 1070 and you know. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's go into the basement here. All right, so this is kind of how it looks once you go into an interior. And uh, let me go full screen here. All right, and uh, kind of how the light comes in. And uh, what I wanted to do is actually, uh, did I hit the break point or what? I just wanted to play Tappy Chicken. Hopefully that, hopefully Unreal is not gonna crash on me. I also have two uh, two instances of Unreal open because I am I was working on transferring some of the um, some of the physical material particles from a ballistics project that I had from a while back, and I'm not entirely sure why this one froze on me. Let me see. I'm wondering if it was like hitting a breakpoint or something. Um, let me try. Let me try interacting with uh, this guy again because this one uh, was a really fun project that I had from a while back, and uh, I, I figured out this would be like the perfect place to put it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, let me see why that is uh, that was uh, freezing up. I'm not entirely sure because I've actually literally just tried it out earlier today. And this whole week, I never got that uh, direct 3D crash like we we got in the previous uh, or the one before it stream. And um, yeah, so let's go in here. Oh, that's what it was. I guess it was hitting a breakpoint and being full screen. I could not tell. All right, so right off the bat, I think this is going to be kind of difficult. I think the the brightness on it is a little bit too big. So let me let me try and adjust that real quick. I actually I'm not sure if I can how easily I can do that. I'm just going to uh, try and let me just move it outside for now. At least that way I can show you what it does. I think it's something related to the post-process volume. Whereas the exposure and the luminosity, like the, the, mm, the emissive on that screen is a little too big. Because that's the other thing with with lumen em emissive also um, contributes to lighting, and I think that's what might be happening. That's why it looks a little, a little weird. Let's see how it looks outside here. Oh yeah, that looks better. All right, so now uh, let's see how many points we can get. I'm pretty bad at this. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> and then you can exit at any time to like uh, leave the game, but that's kind of a little bit of a fun, because uh, I love many games in games, you know, games in games. And uh, I always thought this is kind of like a fun little uh, thing to have. I guess I need to I never fix this thing to, sh to hide the, ah, oh, come on. All right, yeah, that's pretty difficult, but uh, but you get the point. 
so so yeah that's uh that was the other update uh just working on this uh since this is tied to to a mission uh working on the um, um this uh this basement which was uh also from a really awesome package but uh to to get it and uh, you know kind of implement it into the the house itself where you exit from it and then you're kind of going to meet with uh with your um with the npc over on the top of this ridge here so at that point uh this this area is going to be you know with with a bunch of the guards and um uh, you'll you'll have to find some items back in here and this being one of them all right and uh yeah that's um that was the other update from uh from this week uh you know spent some time on just creating this <laughs> Uh, which seems easy, you know, creating this this piece here, but um, it it took me a little bit longer just from the, you know, trying to get it so that it blends with the terrain a little bit better and and how to do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So for the rest of the stream, what I was thinking of doing is um, kind of working on this little area here where the substation is and. Um, and linking it to the dam. Oh yeah, I forgot to, to show you that part. So I've also added the dam over here. And of course, I'm um, guessing I might have messed up the terrain a little bit, but uh, so I need to address that. Uh, but yeah, here is the dam where kind of the power for the area is coming from with just a little bit of a uh, body of water behind it. And uh, what, yeah, so the plan would be to uh, to add a, a few more of these, uh, you know, electrical these these big electrical poles uh, to link into the substation from from there. So that's part one. We'll see how much time we got left. Maybe we'll also address this uh, this the area around the substation to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 fill this in. Uh, Hey, Donation. Uh, bonjour. Uh, oh, perfect, perfect. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going forward. We're, we're moving forward. Uh, slowly but surely, you know. Oh, three die. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you changed uh, change your uh, uh, your ID. Perfect. Well, good to have you. Great to have you. And uh, water needs some life. So, uh, Imran. That was uh, that's a great uh, uh, a great uh, suggestion, and um, what I was uh, what I'm still trying to find is a, a way to do birds a little bit better than what I currently have for the, um, the those particles that you've seen in in my test level. You know, there's like some uh, oh personal account. Okay, yeah. So in round, yeah, the the birds that I sh I shown you in like a previous in in my test level, they um, they're just uh, Niagara particles and they they work out okay, but I'm I'm trying to see if I can find something a little bit more dynamic, and I'm still uh, wrestling with that. Uh, as far as life, you know, yeah, there's gonna be uh, this this area around here is gonna have you know trees painted around it. Uh, as well as you know, kind of on these slopes over here, but uh, but yeah, you, you're not going to be able to uh, to you know to get to here. I think the, the only place you're going to be able to get is through um, on uh, on this level here, where the, uh, the 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 dam is, like the I guess the underside of the dam. Yeah, and and the dam itself at the moment is pretty. It was a very quick job that I did here. You know, when I created this, uh, like literally, uh, just wanted to to. This is really more of a block out, <laughs> as 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 a traditional block out than uh, than I I normally do. But uh, but yeah, this was a really good easy you know way to visualize the scale compared to uh, you know because like you're gonna be down here. So the scale of it is, is is about where it needs to be, 
but um, but yeah, I still need to refine a little bit, and also this area around it. Maybe we'll we'll take a look at that during tomorrow's stream. But yes, in the meantime, let's uh, let's get to it and uh, and place some of these some of these uh, these electrical um, poles kind of just around the road through here somewhere. So we'll see we'll see how many of them. Uh, actually, maybe we'll see if I'm just going to start with one of them here at the top, or... Let's just start from here. And then we'll kind of place them a little bit more sparsely than um, than what the, the ones that follow the road are, because these are just like really high power lines, so... Just link these together. These are not dynamic since they're just uh, kind of, uh, you know, placed here and there. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be one there. Let's place another one maybe over here. Then let's do maybe one over here. And one on top of this mound. And I think this is like the fun part about, uh, you know, game development, just trying to uh, you know, plan out these, all these locations. It's been, it's been quite, quite interesting for me. Because again, there is no like urbanism plan, if so to speak. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's link these together here. This one needs to link. Oh, come on, really? Uh, I'm going to, luckily, uh, this is a plus. <laughs> Adamski, welcome, welcome. This is a plus. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to shut down my other Unreal Engine instance. Uh, that could have been a factor in this, you know, along with streaming. But the good thing is that last time <laughs> it crashed the, the the whole system, and at least now it's uh, it's just you know starting up Unreal again. The problem is I'm not sure how far back how much I lost, <laughs> and this is like the frustrating part. But uh, yeah, save often because these things are not gonna like. They're not gonna, uh, they don't care. <laughs> so yeah, let's get back in there and we'll uh, we'll get back uh, back on the horse. All right, and yeah, let's let's open some of these. I was gonna not open them up because the more tabs you have open, the more it draws on uh, the performance. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close a number of these. Hopefully it's gonna, it's gonna work a little bit better. Let's see how many can I close.
All right. Well, I actually almost closed all of them. So hopefully that's going to uh, that's going to help a little bit as well. Uh, oh, man. Uh, hey, um, hey, Imran, uh, you need a fan lineage if you, oh my God. Uh, yeah. And this is, this is what's interesting because I, this week, and I have done f far more intense things that I'm, I just did now and it never crashed, but but here it goes now, you know, I was just streaming and it just decided to, you know what, I'm going to crash now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, for them. Uh, hey, how you doing? It keeps crashing when I'm going to press import. I haven't in on, you know, I, I guess every, you know, your, your, your mileage might vary on my end. Uh, the most frequent crashes that I've gotten are during when I do an undo. It's 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 uh, undo is like is like killing Unreal or at least for me, it's um, every single I mean not every single but like I think eighty to ninety percent of my crashes that are not explained by something that I did are from uh, from an undo. Um, how to fix it? <laughs> Great question. I I don't think. Epic knows how to fix it, to be honest, because I, I, I'm not sure if they, it, it's one of those errors that I, I really, like, I'm, I'm curious, whenever you get the crash reports, if that it just, I know they, uh, you know, they they get probably millions every day, uh, you know, probably millions, that's a lot, but in the thousands every day. So I, I know they probably just put them in a pool. And a lot of these, they just get ignored. A lot of these, like like this crash that just happened, because it's not so much, probably not related to Unreal as much. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think uh, we might need to add a bunch of the, a bunch of these polls. Luckily, that was the only thing that I did. Um. So. Yeah, I wish I could have. I, I wish I've. Had more experience with with the with the crashes, but but I don't. So um, yeah, that's that's why it's so tough. Uh, so Damski, uh, uh, what GPU do you have? I have a 1070. Like uh, I'm not even sure how old it is. Maybe 10, 8, 9, 10 years old. At least eight years old, because I know I've had it for like. Four years, and the owner before me had it for at least four years. Uh, so yeah, I think one of the first 1070s. Uh, so yeah, it's so let's start with this, and I'm gonna try and save a little bit more often. And and like I said, it uh, I never had one crash this week, like one crash, like this one. Um, or, you know, crashes that I'm like, well, I didn't do anything. It just it just crashed when I in, uh, run an undo or something. Uh, so those never those never happened this week. Actually, I'm surprised. Uh, most of the crashes just happened because of stuff that I did. Uh, you know, kind of related to maybe blueprints or something else. But uh, DirectX 3D, I mean. Streaming could also be part of it. I I still haven't. I actually need to update my OBS uh, tool. I'm not sure if any if related, but uh, I haven't updated it in a while, and it keeps barking at me every time I I start it up. So I'm gonna update that as well. I'm not sure. Hopefully it's gonna help. Um. Oh damn! <laughs> Did not know Unreal run good on those cards. Oh yeah, it does. It does. And you know, Lumen, everything in there. In, in there. Um, like when I built the game, for whatever reason, by default, it defaults to Epic, and it still runs on Epic at like around up to 30 frames per second. And if you've seen some of the stuff that I've played around, um, and um, yeah, it 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 runs pretty good. It could run better, of course, but um, but not not too shabby for for a ten, you know, uh, 
<laughs> what I'd like to say, maybe older than some people that watch me video card. <laughs> Uh, where is it here? Come on, come on. There. Oh, hey, Gitish. Welcome, welcome to, for the 12 viewer that had joined us. Gitish, welcome, welcome. Oh, it defaults to cinematic. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think I think it's in the build settings. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's. Uh, I'm wondering if that that's where it might be. Um, where where that could be updated. Yeah. And you know, uh, the previous crash. Like I said, it might have been due to the me running two instances of Unreal, like a 4.27 and uh, this one 5.3. So that's um, that could also have been a factor in it deciding to uh, to crash. All right, so let's see, maybe this one, I can position it somewhere around here. All right, so let's select this and link it into here. There we go. And now this one from here, let's actually position it a little bit closer to the, to the, power to the substation so I can hopefully link it a little bit easier. So there's that. Select all matching classes. I don't think that actually works. Well, why wouldn't that work? That's so odd. Let's. I just wanted to uh, to refresh the the connections. So these ones here. Where is it? Reset. Reset wires. Just to kind of reconnect them. There we go. Okay. So from here, this one. I'm just gonna disconnect. It's next connection and then I'm just going to link it from one of these bad boys here which kind of plays uh, a similar role oh 5.3 but mine crash when importing I'll try again so uh for uh it's um I, do do uh, do I have you on discord um because maybe if you want to do it after um, after the stream, we can jump on a quick chat in the in the chat channel uh, on on my Discord server, and um, maybe you can show me what's going on. I mean, I'm probably going to tell you what I'm telling you now, but uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> maybe something will jump at us. We can look at uh, we can look at the, the the log report as well and see what's going on. Uh, sorry, then. Can the world partition specify a different loading distance according uh, to the landscape part? Uh, yes. The um, the one thing that I could not figure out. So uh, when you look at the landscape, let me save. Let me save before it crashes. All right. So when you look at the landscape, uh, a landscape piece, you got the runtime grid somewhere. Uh, where is it? Uh, Maybe I should just search for it. Might be easier. Okay, so you got the runtime grid down here. So you can set this to whatever grid you defined in your world settings, right? So I have a bunch of grids, and uh, you can set that up here. The only problem is, at least for me, and I couldn't figure out, is if you have the landscape selected. My understanding is that the landscape actor should also have a uh, spatially loaded here like this checked and unfortunately i can't seem to check it on my end i'm not entirely sure why i'm wondering i'm not sure if it works for like an individual so if 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 you if you choose like an individual one see so you can set it to spatially loaded but at at that point it's going to complain that this uh, actor you know, since it's a child, kind of references the main. You know, uh, 
it that you need to set this one as specially loaded as well. Like whenever you add a spline, you also need to set that to be to match what the landscape is. And I could not figure out uh, I think in the beginning when I first set it up, it was working to, to set this to, uh, to spatially loaded, like the, the main landscape and not its individual pieces. But, uh, and th these are Splan actors, so let me go to like a streaming proxy, right? So this one here, I believe would have, or maybe it's disabled because the one, the main one is disabled. Uh, let's see, uh, is, what is it? Uh, what was that option? Loaded, something loaded, spatially loaded. Yeah, so see this one you can set for each streaming proxy. But yeah, I think uh, if I recall correctly, when you, when you go into game mode, it complains that this one is not spatially loaded. So I still need to look into that and it looks like Hisham, you have the same issue, okay. Um, sorry, Nen, I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't tell you anything more but but that's how you would set it up maybe maybe it's just something on my end and uh um but i'll 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 keep looking into it as well just to see to see if there is something um if there is something that i figure out cuz that would that kind of bothered me and you know kind of thank you for the reminder it's also uh, on the back of my mind as well okay so let's take a look at uh, what I wanted to add here. These pieces, these pieces, what they can do is actually, I can link those into one of these big guys here. So that way there's like some, uh, uh, you know, kind of the, the power comes in off of the, the, main, the main line there. You know, it goes into this little, little house here. There's like whatever happening, you know, uh, in there. And then it goes up to here, and from here it gets sent down down the line somewhere else. And uh, yeah, there we go. I just need to position this a little bit better. It kind of got a little messed up there. There we go. Okay. So now there it has some semblance of of things happening. Uh, actually, let me. I don't want to link it into this one. I think this one. Um. Let me clear that. Ooh, and it seems that if that's null, it kind of breaks the positioning of this. So let's see, I'm gonna link it into this. Come on, like that. And then maybe this one, I'm actually gonna link this one. No, I don't think I can, uh, let's see, I can link it into here like this and these guys here oh yeah they get messed up if they're not linked into something let's try and get one of the regular electrical poles and see if i can link it into that so that would kind of bring the electricity to town i'm going to try and use one of these bad boys here And this one, let's see if I can link it into this. Uh, didn't like that very much. Let's take a look at why. Um, yeah, and you're right. <laughs> you're probably right. That's why I was looking at it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this, you know. Uh, it definitely looks a little odd. You're, you're right about that. So uh, let's actually do it. Uh, let's actually do it like this. I'm just going to remove these because because yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, thank you so much for uh, uh, for uh, convincing me about that. <laughs> so I'm just going to use that one at the top to link it here. Yeah. So this one, I think it might be a little bit better over there in that uh, in that top sections you need two towers in the grid stations one for incoming and two for outgoing oh okay so in that case one is going to go here let's see can we do that 
Uh, how would we do that? And then again, this, this setup is very fictitious, uh, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, take it with a big grain of salt. And this one, let's dig into here maybe. Come on. This is so hard to select. You know, something like that. I mean, it's a game, right? Somewhat, somewhat to make sense. <laughs> Yeah, I think it it should be fine, but but you're definitely right. It looked very funky with that. Uh, I can kind of see these breakers out here, you know, because um, that's what the package was like. And uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, you know, th those main lines were really coming close to the ground. And then we have these ones, so we need to add a couple of uh, post process volumes for the interiors here. And uh, you know, fix this fence so we can uh, use kind of just a, a similar fence that I've used in other locations, mainly over here. So this unit of fences. Uh, let's see which one is this. So this particular one. And uh, let's also use this post process volume over here. Uh, so the level itself is uh, so all, like all the playable area, which is this this area here, is about uh, two by two kilometers, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and as far as levels, and I, th I got quite a quite a big number of them because you know that's that's how I manage how things are loaded. Like, um, so I I'll give you an example. For example, um. The um, this would would be in like the main level, this uh, apartment, but the inside of it, you know, everything inside here. Uh, best example would be this. So this would be like its own little level for like the living room area, and this would have a, a runtime grid uh, of you know for small assets. So basically, they would only get loaded once you're like really close up to it. And you know that would be similar for all interiors. It'd be like their their own little level instances, slash you know pack level actors that you can set so um, to have a specific loading distance. Like for example, uh, for example here, this would be another example. Like the 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 level uh, for the motel. So the motel itself would be a pretty big loading distance, but then inside. You have uh, the interiors. This is going to be another uh, uh, one that I set up to be as small assets, you know, for the interiors. And kind of the same goes for like the lobby here. You know, the lobby would be uh, small assets as well. Um, similarly, you know, when it comes to uh, to the diner, this would also be an interior which would be small assets. So they only get loaded once you're really close. And um, an example for this one, like this one, I don't have it set up that way just yet. You know, these are just, uh, uh, they're still on one level. This delivery warehouse is, is all one level, you know? So this needs to be broken into the exterior walls, which would be, you know, large assets, kind of runtime grid. And then the interior, which is small assets, uh, for uh, for its runtime grid. 
So uh, hopefully that uh, Imran, ho hopefully that makes makes sense. Let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's what uh, that's how I'm planning this. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, looks a little bit better without it and with it. I think it can even get a little bit more of a of a boost in the exposure. There we go. A little bit better. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Well, we got this linked. We're some electrical engineers. Oh, three die. Hey, um, can you show us the hotel house? How much the size is of your pro uh, project? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Do you mean like the, the hotel itself here? Like this area? Or like the the packed size of the... Because um, I can tell you how, how big the, the game itself, like around how big that's going to be once it's packed. It's, it's right around... Uh, I think it ended up being around 30 gigs for like everything. So, but... Uh, Oh. Uh you so you mean this area? Uh or like this entire world. Because again, these these areas are not gonna be playable just yet. You know, they're not playable. Oh, hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, that's what's odd. It seems like, um, I'm, I'm starting to think, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to update OBS because it, it's starting to be like a pattern. It's, it seems to only crash when I'm streaming, which is, uh, you know, I know I got a, a, a really old video card, but uh, it it never crashes like this week. It never crashed uh, with this error. <laughs> it seems to only crash during streams. So I'm thinking it, I'm not sure if it's due to also OBS. And uh, <laughs> assessment is that your PC was possessed. I could it could very be a, a, a true statement. And um, I am not sure at this point. <laughs> On, on on the other hand, I was thinking because I am running pretty low on um, on a few of my drives on space. While I'm not entirely sure if, if that might be causing troubles, I you know I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So that's why I'm I'm kind of thinking it's OBS. That's the only variable that's uh, that hasn't been yet updated. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll update that, uh, right after the stream. So fingers crossed, we'll, we'll get to, and at the same time, as you remember, as you've seen, it crashed when I was like zooming out. So there was like probably a ton of stuff happening on the CPU, on GPU, and maybe that could have caused it, but yeah, I've done that plenty of times in um um this week and the only difference is that now i'm streaming hmm, we'll see <laughs> uh you need a ten thousand dollar pc now yes i i sure whip i sure wish that be possible <laughs> um do you know how much video memory you're using uh, i think it's i think it's uh because it, it gets maxed out so I th if you uh, I think if you go here right you should be able to see it on the performance so this is usually uh 
I think it's usually all the way up up there. But that is the same. Uh, oh, that's actually a good. Uh, um, I know I had a thing to look at thermals, but uh, but last time I checked, they weren't bad. Like this is 47. Um, so it's not. Um, I'm not sure if I can see it on the on the CPU and the task manager, but um, um, and the GPU and none of them are overclocked. They're just standard, um, uh, like never been. Uh, and I've seen the same GPU memory usage whenever I play video games or whatever. You know, they it still goes up to like, you know, I don't know, like why it just hovers around seven instead of going higher or lower. I'm not sure what that decision is. Hey, Don Ron, Sean, welcome. Uh, I just reinstalled OBS and set up for streaming. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a great thought. I've, I haven't, uh, I haven't reinstalled it, uh, but that I could try and do that as well. Uh, Latinka, let's see. Uh, that's the same crash before I upgraded my video card. Now it never crashes. <laughs> yeah, well, um, that you know that's on the back of my mind now, uh, and I know eight gigs is is pretty low for for Unreal, and especially Unreal Five. Once you once you add in Lumen, you know, not even thinking about Nanite, but yeah, once you add all those in, it becomes taxing. So I'm gonna try and not zoom in out of the map too much this time. Hopefully. Uh, just keep it kind of within, you know, viewing distance around here. Hopefully that's not going to uh, crash it again. <laughs> we'll see. If if it does, it might be just a, a sign to, okay, enough for today. You know, reinstall what needs to be reinstalled and, uh, you know, uh, come at me tomorrow. <laughs> and, you know, the page File size. That's I think. Uh, was it you, Imran, that, that suggested that last time? Uh, I never got around to doing that because I didn't want to mess up, m mess around with, uh, um, th with that. Okay, so Windows G. I haven't tried that yet. Oh, that's a cool. Uh, it just shows on a different screen on my end. It shows on a on a second screen but but yeah that's uh thank you so much uh Hisham. oh yeah the, uh, i guess i can't drag it off off of that screen that it's locked to oh that's silly but yeah like the vram is at 96 percent usage um gpu is like a hundred percent apparently the ram 55 uh, CPU 20%. So I, th I think yeah, the the GPU is, um, uh, is pretty uh, <laughs> uh, pretty maxed out. I would say. I mean, it it still runs just as good as it runs in a video game as far as uh, you know, hitches and everything else. But again, there's that error. So yeah, I'm gonna try and um. Uh, uh, see about uh, OBS, and I guess uh, next uh, next time streaming will will be a telltale sign if uh, if it fixed if it got fixed or not. All right, so let's uh, let's get back to this. Hopefully, we can uh, get a little bit uh, more stuff in. I try and like uh, fly over here to grab this particular mesh. Or were we over here? Um, hey, Captain Panda, welcome. Uh, can I unload some quads on? Uh, oh, can you? Uh, are you asking? Can, can you unload some quads on a world partition while working in a region? That's a great question. Um, I, I don't know, actually, 
That is a great thought, but um, hmm. I'd be interested if that's uh, um, because I'm I'm I think once you uh, uh, the grid only gets applied at runtime, as my knowledge. So I'm not entirely sure if you can do that at uh, in in just in in editor like this. What I'm wondering is if I can probably hide a bunch of these uh, landscape streaming proxies that are just, you know, not really, uh, you know, kind of like this. Not sure if that's going to help. Um, but yeah, data layers. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Thank you so much. Um, I have looked into those a little bit, but um, I haven't actually managed to um honestly to see to see their usage but now that you mention it maybe they have some usage for stuff like this um uh, just for like organizing stuff that's a great suggestion many many thanks captain panda Okay, what have I done? I was about to grab this one from here and place it over on that side. It may be the VRAM. And if it's the VRAM, just lower the texture settings. Uh, yeah, that could be it as well. But like I said, it's um, it just crashed now uh, for the first time this week <laughs> during during streaming. You know. <laughs> which which is why it's so odd, you know. Epic users in modern samples. Oh, okay, okay, I got you now. Thank you, Captain. Uh, so yeah, that's um, uh, is is there uh, are you referring to the content examples project? Because that's the one that I was looking at earlier, uh, for some animation stuff. So I'm wondering, do do they have them in there as well? Because I, I was looking at them a while back, and like I said, I just either didn't spend enough time to to see to see how they work, um, and I'm just okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try something else. All right, where is the? And why is this one not applying static mesh?
And Hisham, I'm, I'm hoping it's just OBS. Um, and it's just the up that I need to uh, um, to upgrade it. Oh, city sample. Okay, gotcha. I wasn't sure when you said uh, the, the the modern samples. I was thinking like either the content examples of. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks again for the suggestion. I, I, like I said, I was. Uh, um, I think I looked at it at, at one point, and then I just. Um, I either got sidetracked or I can't remember what uh, what had happened. All right, let's do this. Five instances, they're going to be linear. Let's adjust the scale. There. And rotation. Like that. And fixed distance. Mm, I think this one should be actually just spline. Yeah, I think I had uh, uh, Captain Pan. I had the. Uh, what was it the the city sample a while back and uh, I, I was just having such a hard time running it because <laughs> you know 1070 but um but yeah that was uh that was actually pretty good a pretty good project to look at and where is the actual spline for this. Why am I having such a hard time finding it? Let me just cheat a little bit and I'll grab one of these. Oh, actually, that's in a separate level. I was hoping I could grab that one uh, fence and just bring it in. And I'm not entirely sure why this one doesn't really work without a blueprint. So there's that. I wanted it to be on a spline. But I'm not seeing the spline itself. This is kind of odd. There's no external spline source. Huh, there we go. That was really unreal. Sometimes it's, you can't attribute it to nothing. <laughs> Okay, so now let's add the uh, add the, the the mesh. This is why I really like this tool so much. And zero spread, fixed distance. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Oh, good to have you. Good to have you. It's been a while. It definitely has. How are you? All right, so there we go. That's one uh, for the scale. And um, let's do a rotation on this. 
So it's pointed that away. And now let's make the spread be, is it 500? Would that be enough? Um, oh, oh, quick refresh. So level string, I am more partitioning it. And uh, so the landscape uh, right now, I think the, the entire world is four by four kilometers, but the playable area is just around a little bit over two-ish by two-ish. So that's uh, that's how big that is. Oh shoot, this is not the right place. My bad guys, I'm so sorry. Um, so spline down, and it's actually this, the, the fixed distance is what I was looking for to, to space these out and uh, kind of position them as in a fence-like fashion. So let's just try and place this around here somewhere. And five number of instances. Extend this out a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, if you got the right spacing, these join together really nicely. And uh, that's that. I mean, imagine if you want to have like a really big fence, how easy this is. How uh, how have you been? Good to have you. Now let's see about positioning these so they're uh, kind of in line with it. Let's do no tracing so we're not uh, like looking at the terrain. And basically, it's just on the wherever it hits. Oh, and actually, I forgot that these particular this particular asset package has a mesh for the corner because it's got this little thing at the top. But for now, we'll just kind of position it like this. Uh, so for the world partition, uh, let me see in the world settings. Um, well, basically, a lot of it is just based on the grids, right? And since I haven't had any success with the H lot layers, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm relying on the runtime grids. So I have uh, you can ignore that one, but I have a number of grids for like foliage, you know, large assets, medium assets, small assets, and uh, uh, kind of that's how I'm. That's how I'm managing that, uh, Hisham. Uh, let me know if that was that was your question. Oh, you moved to rural France. Nice. Cool, 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 Hisham. That's good to know. Um, and Mark, but then I see your friend, I think, probably longer. <laughs> well, I mean, that's. I think it's not... Um, Sometimes I feel the same way. I have to. I have to say. I have to say that it's 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 really tough. Not not so tough, but uh, you know, you just think that you oh that 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 guy has also done this, so maybe I should do it as well. But I'm um, I'm kind of I haven't really thought of it that way too much. I mean, because a lot of it is just okay. That's actually a cool mechanic, and it's it's more in uh, looking at it that way than anything else. So that's why you know some things I I definitely I definitely have to scratch some things. You know, like I'm not going to implement that because it's just I, I thought about something the other day, uh, and uh, it 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 felt like it was pretty fun to do. But then I I kind of took a little bit of time to think of. 
well, this is how long is this going to take? And it, you know, by my estimates, it was going to take me a couple of weeks to try and do it. And uh, at that point, I thought, you know, this is probably not worth it. Uh, and it wasn't, it was just a mini game type of thing, you know. And uh, I was just afraid that it's going to just introduce some other, some other issues. And I, I kind of thought, you know, I'm just going to not, not do it. But yeah, any, you know, cool, cool mechanics are cool mechanics, I have to say. And I, you know, seeing them in, in some projects, I, I really appreciate those. All right, let me take a look at this one. Why is this scale? Feels like it's a really big scale. I'm not sure why. Let's put the player and walk around this area a little bit. Uh, where where did I put it? Was it in the basement? Where was the start player? It wasn't in here. It was out here somewhere. Let me see. Start. Player start. Oh, it's it's over. It's not that. It's this one actually. Oh, it's back here. Okay. So let me compare that the scale to. Okay. Don't forget to save. Um, so Damsky, how long have you worked on this game? <laughs> oh man, um, it's been a while because I, so I started the whole game development thing in 2013 and I started with CryEngine with the idea for this game. And, um, I, you know, I spent like five-ish years in CryEngine, you know, trying to work on this. And at the time, you know, kind of a lot of stumbling was was happening and a lot of learning was happening. And uh, in 2018, I believe, I'm, yeah, middle of 2018, I moved to Unreal and I started working again on the project, kind of starting from scratch, basically. So I would say six-ish, five-ish years. Um, you know, part-time, this is this is hobby, hobby thing. Um, Fence is really, really big, it feels like. All right, there we go. That looks actually pretty good inside there. Uh, Mark, what was it? Uh, how long into that did you start level design plus art? Been at least three years. Um, you know what? I think. I was doing, maybe not the right way to do this, but I was doing both at the same time, like literally, because uh, uh, somebody asked, was asking me, how, how, you, how, how don't you get bored? And I think that's how I don't get bored. <laughs> I, do, uh, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, so to speak. And um, yeah. But when it comes to uh, to level design plus art, it was from from the beginning, you know. And in in parallel, uh, I was doing some some of the blueprinting, you know, uh, part of it, and learning that, understanding it. <laughs> Chad is gonna. Um, will you or are you planning to use H lods? Uh, Captain Panda, uh, that was a gr that's a great question because I was trying to uh, to build H lods, but I can't visualize them. You know, like the the, the engine itself, you know, it takes about an hour to build all the H lods, uh, and um, it's um, once it's done, I could not 
see like whenever you go in to to lit and uh hierarchical LOD coloration, I'm not seeing anything. Like so it looks like it they didn't get built. It kind of feels like it runs a little bit better, but I can't really tell if anything happened. So I um I wish I could use them if if they actually do something. But um I a lot, what I'm currently doing is I'm also using a lot of the pack level actors. So that I've noticed with the pack level actors that had significantly dropped my uh, my draw calls and um, mainly around uh, the the repeating uh, uh, actors. You know, so let's let me jump out of this real quick and I'll show you. Uh, so namely, like. Um, like this building here, it's got a bunch of pieces for the wall and they're all the same. So this is just a pack level a pack level actor inside of this level. The interior, exactly the same. And uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's what I use a, a pack level actor for. If on top of that, I could rely on H lods, that'd be, that'd be amazing. And so, Imran, uh, a deadline for the project? Um, not, not so much. You know, like it's. Um, I I am trying to get it out as soon as I can, just for people to like play it, hopefully enjoy it. Uh, but uh, but no, I I'm I don't have a you know set date with with uh, for it. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Atlantica? Uh, I, I didn't know you guys know each other. That's awesome. <laughs> Did somebody say deadline? You know, it's um, uh, it's a tough one because we're so used to that, and you know, companies have that going right, where they have a specific uh, a specific timeline for their project. But again, you know, they're like you know, 100% of their time is invested into that. Mine is, you know, what, 20, 30% of it. Like, I'm thinking of, you know, you wake up in the morning, you you, you go to bed at night. Uh, how much time are you investing into into something? So this is a little bit interesting how this one scales things up. Um, it seems to like double it for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why. It's kind of odd. I think that should be about where where I want this scale to be. Let's just flip this around. I'm not sure actually it's not really doing it. Uh, what I wanted to do is flip these like that. So that way I can try and position it on the corner here and place this one best as I can to join together with that. And if I can do that, and silly me, I did not use what I had already built in the other place. Why would not? Why wouldn't I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I like the the difficulty in things. All right. So now with this one, hopefully, we can go about it on this corner. Is that the right orientation? No. What should it be? 180, 180. There we go. Okay, cool. And let's just do a little bit more instances. Eight, ten. Uh, 
<laughs> Far Cry 5, Andre. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I definitely not gonna push it to to uh, to that extent, but because uh, I I do I do want to have this game done. You know, it's not a uh, on a you know unfinishable project. It's it's definitely an undertaking, but uh, it's it's fun. Uh, yeah, and, and that that's a great point, Enron. I, I love that uh, stages for for different stages. And you know, I think the first stage is you know trying to get this demo out this year. You know, this uh, hopefully this summer, and um, and get and, and get people to try it out. So hopefully the 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 playable area is going to be like this is what I'm focusing on. You know, kind of this this residential area and some of the town. Um, so that's at least that's what I'm that's what I'm planning for. Uh, the spline and AI stuff behave itself across world partition cells. So, Mark, I believe uh, the um, I think with the AI, it uh, I think it behaves how you implement it, right? So, the way I've implemented in mine is with um, um, invokers, right? So, you they only tick, they only do something if they're within your range or whatever the uh, uh, the range on your on your character is. And I also don't have the AI on the on a, a on a specific on a sub level, right? Um, so once you're you you're up close enough to that um, to that character, they're gonna get that that level around it is gonna get loaded in as well, and uh, at least that's you know my assumption and you know the way I'm planning on doing it. <laughs> it it might turn out to be a little bit different once I am um, you know in it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's hopefully it's just it's gonna work out is is what I'm hoping. <laughs> we'll see. Come on, tiny bit more. I guess I can call that good. Yeah. It could have benefited for maybe one more piece. So let's see if I can pull this out by another 500. Uh, actually, no. Should be 250. So one, two, and then another 50. Let's see how bad my math is here. And we'll add another instance to this. There we go. Uh, actually, quite all right. Not too bad. I can just move these off a little bit since that they are. Uh, they're just not in the perfect spot. Let's see, would a five grid of, grid of five do it? It's a little too much. Let's go back to one. There. Okay, perfect. They seem to be pretty good. Uh, so yeah, Mark. Hopefully that. Um, let me let me know what what your thoughts are on on that. Any scout? Hello, hello, welcome. All right, let's add the other corner slash side to this. All right, and this one I need to adjust its rotation. Come on. There we go. So this one I think is going to be at 90 and 90. Am I facing it the right way? Yes. Okay, that's good. Almost good on this end. I think a little bit too many of these, but I still need to move this off a little bit. So let's try. 
and kind of scooch this along. I was going to say, I'll be damned. Is that right on? No, not yet. That's pretty darn close. Let's see. Since I'm usually picky about these little things here, I'm not sure why it just bothers me. Like, I... Um, I'm not sure what game I was playing. Was it Doom or something? And I kept on noticing these kind of overlaps like happening. I'm like, what the hell? I'm not sure why I was just like <laughs> enraged by it, but there, it's better. I guess I might have been thinking, you know, okay, ID software, this has got to be top notch. But, you know, not, doesn't happen all the time. Okay, there we go. Those match pretty good. All right. And on this end, we can start. Let's close this off. I think if we can close this off and, uh, and make some things around here with these types of kind of these angles, you know, kind of fill them up with some of these big, big blocks of stone, that should be, should be pretty good. Uh, Hisham. I just created the landscape and the character and I'm getting free FPS on FPS. Um, on Epic. I mean, I guess it, uh, 40 frames, you, you said you have a 1660, right? So that's comparable to mine seven, 1070. I, I don't think that is. I mean, I think that's, well, uh, actually if it's just a completely empty landscape, it might not be, cause I'm getting like, I'm getting in here in certain areas, 40 frames on Epic. So maybe there's something, uh, something going on. Uh, yeah. Uh, Atlantica, how come you chose not to use Voxel Progging for landscape? You know what? Cause, uh, I think one of the reasons was it's in the name, you know, plugin. <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, to to use uh, uh, as 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 little plugins as possible. I know that vo the voxel plugin has been around for a while, so I'm sure it's you know uh, it's in a good state. But um, I um, I think it was just a learning curve that I was afraid of. And I already had something that to me was looking kind of decent. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to stick with this. Uh, so if, if people, if people were to ask me stuff about landscape, I'm, I'm, I'm very mediocre when it comes to it, you know, to the knowledge about landscape. I, I know a little bit about, you know, like the editing tools and all that, but when it comes to like, okay, well, what's, what resolution do you recommend for the landscape and things like that? I would not be a really good resource. I would be pretty bad at it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I kind of knew what I wanted for the landscape and the size of it. But then when it comes to resolution and all that, I've I've gone through a ton of iterations until I, I got it right. And I probably couldn't tell you what I did because they were just, it, it, with with the landscape, they were, there was a point where I was either a little frustrated and I was just, throwing everything at the wall, seeing what sticks. And that's why I'm like, right now, if you ask me about this, I can tell you, okay, now I know it's, you know, it's, you know, it's partition, the word partition, this is kind of the settings for it, um, you know, materials and all that. But if, if you were to tell me, if I was to select this and look at the resolution and all that, I have no idea what any of these mean, like literally. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that was, you know, for me, landscape was just, okay, it's there, just, you know, go with it. <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, just getting near to the end of my three years working on player locomotion parkour. Oh, wow. You got parkour in it. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, the editor is coping really well, and uh, this is with some tabs open. So I'm thinking I might even it might even do a little bit better with. Uh, and this is yeah, see, so it it goes to like 40 frames per second, in um, in here. You know, of course, uh, it's it doesn't have uh, you know once it's in game mode, it should be a little bit better because here it's also using. Uh, like um, you know, everything is loaded, but to some extent, so the, the the draw calls are pretty high. Oh, Hish, I'm sorry about that with the metahuman. Oh, hopefully, you can figure it out. Um, I guess that's your work on the H lods and restrained level side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's it is Mark, but I again with the H lods, I'm gonna try and build them again, and see. You know, kind of if uh, if the performance improves, because again, I'm I'm not entirely sure if if they if they even work. I I know maybe it's just a visualization that doesn't do anything. Maybe I'm not building them right. Yeah. Um, and that's true, Atlantica. I mean, with the vanilla option, it's it's easier to control. Um, I just uh, you know your project is is you know on that kind of scale that you know does that makes sense for you and on my end it's just like you know tiny thing oh <laughs> uh, yeah uh let's see any scout uh you know that walking bug with the racing change the name oh unreal engine 5 bug oh no yeah so i mean that's one of the things that uh i'm, I'm kind of missing uh, from Unreal Engine 4. I think that was like the 4.27 to me, you know, uh, was the most stable version. And again, I kind—I think I started with Unreal at 4.22. But 4.27 was like the most stable version yet of all the Unreal Engine uh, versions out there. Um, like everything was running really well. I, I wish they could they could mimic that in 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 the current versions. <laughs> uh, so Imran, offline? Oh, what do you mean? I I think the stream is still running, right, guys? All right. So let's add a couple more instances here and get it close to. To about where the uh, the the gate would be, I would say maybe to about there. Let's extend this out a little bit to here, and then I'm gonna use one of these from here to move it down here, and I'm just gonna need to flip this around. So zero, zero. All right. So the cool thing about this is, and I don't, this is something I don't understand, is like you can do it like this, and it's not going to run the construction script. But uh, once you use the gizmo to move it around, then it doesn't uh, doesn't have this uh, ability to move it around and see what's going on, which is which is a little odd. Not entirely sure why the blueprints are uh, were like yeah I guess the blueprints are might be like that. There we go. Okay, and so this one is almost closed in. I need to just move this back a little bit, uh, maybe five or six, seven. There we go. All right, so that's that. Um, and I wanted to grab the gate. Oh, save, save, Andre, save. There we go. And this is the gate. And we'll try and place it right here. Did 
that's gonna work everything pretty good. Uh, oh, Joe Garth commented to us whether well, you can scale a 2048 by 2048 landscape up multiple times. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, Mark. That's that's actually a great. Uh, I never thought of that. I actually never thought of scaling this up. <laughs> nice. My Lexi material takes 15 FPS. Is that normal? Is that also? Uh, I think that's a lot. What what kind of material do you have, uh, Hisham? I mean, is the the shader complexity for it really really big? Ah, uh, I guess it had to be. There had to be something that is not quite perfect. But why is that? Is that because of this guy here? All right, so that kind of closed it in a little bit. And it's just off to the side a little bit too much. There we go. That's better. Okay, cool. Let's do some of the sculpting around the terrain and we'll do some painting, kind of place some trees around here, some rocks. And I think we could call that good for today, guys. All right, let's, uh, let's start with the sculpting, with the saving and flatten it to about here. And let's ramp it. From here to about here. I actually think that's just going to be a road. I think that might be a little bit better to do. Um. Oh yeah, Atlantica. That's that's uh, that's true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and now that I'm thinking of it, that might have been the better choice. I just went with. Uh, uh, I was a little too excited about just rotating things around and. I guess that's what I ended up with. All right, let's apply. Let's let's do a quick road over here. Uh, actually, so spline. That's what I wanted to say. And uh, let's select the control points. Set that around five hundred. And let's grab the mesh. And I'm just going to override the materials as I did before. And we have the perfect example right here. All right, let's make this one maybe. A little thinner, like that. Let's sculpt the terrain. And what I wanted to do is this one. Maybe, let's see how can we make this look a little bit better. There we go. Cool. 
Cool. That's pretty good. All right, that's not not too bad. That's a good 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 spot. Uh, now that landscape is better. I mean, I think so. I've seen some uh, some uh, demos. Was it? Uh, I can't remember who did it. Um, but it, it does look it does look really nice. There's some really awesome results uh, that uh, some people have done with the Nana landscape. Uh, I'm just not entirely sure how how well it runs. Um, I mean, yeah, it might run fine on a 4090. <laughs> but that's not everybody's video card. Um, procedural nanite landscape with tessellation. Oh, uh, yeah, I need to check that out. Um, uh, Atlantica, how, how did it run for them? Was it running pretty good or? Oh yeah, there's some issues. Hmm. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's the one thing that I I wasn't sure that I I would I would have liked it too much. Um, uh, and you know, <laughs> if you guys are familiar with the Kiss principle, I'm a firm believer in that one. Uh, so to people that don't know what the Kiss principle is, it's just keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> uh, so that's why. You know, it's like uh, it's always in the back of my mind. Is like, okay, you know, how how far do I want to go with this? And I I just default to to that. You know, keep it simple. Because I think it's pretty easy to to go overboard uh, with things. It's it's really easy, actually. <laughs> Like even in my case, there's there's so many things sometimes that I'm like, I really want to do this. I, w I really want to do that. And then I'm like, okay, I need to hold myself back. Scope creep, exactly. Um, because if, there, if, I, if I would have tried to do all the things that I would have wanted to do, like, I mean, literally, <laughs> it would have been the, the thing with, uh, there's no point in asking for a timeline on, on anything. <laughs> It's it's never gonna get done, <laughs> which is horrible to say. Yeah, there you go, Atlantica. I I totally feel you on that, and you know, I I I don't even think we as human un, humans understand how big just the galaxy is, like, uh, so, <laughs> uh, the universe is. Well, a little bigger. <laughs> There's like, what, what What are they saying? Like, how many billion galaxies in the universe? Or, and that's again, what they're thinking. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what they're thinking that there are, because we don't know for sure. <laughs> that's a really, that's a, that's a guesstimate. <laughs> 
I think at best at times. Um, try and place that there and try and kind of create some of these, some of this cliff sides over here, even though they're not very well polished. Um, That could be about good on that side, I think. Let's try and rotate this a little bit around because it's starting to, to look a little repetitive. There, kind of like that, just to, to mask that. Um, oh, really, Mark? Yeah, you went, you went pretty far out. And Hisham, how can I reduce the shader's complexity? I know there is um, there are a couple of nodes that are used for shaders that usually have a very high impact. And like uh, uh, like Mark is saying, you know, transparency is one of them. Uh, but I believe there's also uh, I can't remember which ones, but there's a there's a few like the. Um, there's like a material blending node that that has uh, has some really high cost on uh, like a shader cost. All right, so we've added a couple of things around here. Maybe this one could use a little help here. Let's see. How can we get this in there? Let's see, I know I have a couple of other rocks that I had the, the shader for. Uh, maybe we can add a little bit more of a, of a change so they're not all just like that one. Something like that like that. There we go. And we can smooth this out a little bit. Okay, that feels like there's something going on. Yeah, draw calls. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's perfect. Good thinking. Oh, so so nanites don't. Yeah, I've, I've heard about transparency. Some some folks were complaining about the transparency and nanite, but um, that's pretty much all that I've heard as well. All right. Well, let's do a little bit of painting just to get some of this covered with some trees and some grass and some stuff in here. And um, that's that way we'll probably call it good for today. Once we get some of this in. Trees around here, around here. Then we'll paint maybe some grasses around there. All right, and let's just save. I'll have to fix that little, let's actually fix it now since we're here. I'll have to uh, do something about that area there. And around here. Okay, where is the tree procedural volume? Small tree, I believe is what I called it. Oh, small area. There we go. Let's get this simulated, see what we get.
Yeah, that's also true. Uh, that's also true. I mean, uh, these are pretty big, like what I have here, and um, I am uh, I am not gonna go over over that. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We got some, you know, the the uh, what this adds in is just pretty cool. Like when it comes to vegetation, <laughs> uh, let me just add a little bit of a uh, uh, tiny bit of things here. On top of this little ridge here, and this one could be actually an area down. There we go, and fresh eye scatter. I was kind of thinking that I can select it and set it to to area. Yeah, no, so area down, where is it, here? That's actually kind of interesting why it doesn't, uh, oh, because it's uh, it's based on how the spline is. So I need to kind of do it like this a little bit more. Mm. I didn't really like that too much, so let's stick with spline. I think that's just going to work. There we go. Just some trees growing on that out outcropping there. And we'll put something over here, maybe. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Captain Panna, does anyone use uh, hard components uh, that are converted to actors when needed? Um, I not not that are uh, not that get converted on demand. Uh, mine are just you know all static. That's a that's a really interesting interesting thought. We try to interact with the oh yeah yeah that's that's what it is uh so i see well um i thought i'm not sure and, and, and i'm not sure if it's using article instance meshes but there was a project like a free thing on the marketplace at one point it might have been like a free for the month i can recall but um I think it was it was like a survival package, and they were using the uh, I think the the actor that they were like a, you know kind of the chopping tree, the the tree that you would be able to chop. Uh, I think that one might have been um, set up as a hierarchical instance actor, if I'm not mistaken. But that was a while ago if, when I've seen it. That's what I'm thinking. And there might be something in the uh, content examples at this point. It's interesting to see how the content examples package has evolved with the versions of Unreal. <laughs> I was just checking it out today for some animations related stuff. And I'm like, wow, they have all this stuff in there now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, so it's just adding a little bit of uh, kind of grasses around here in these, like some of these barren areas. Okay, there we go. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm happy with what we uh what we got accomplished today, I think.
Did you figure out how to transfer data from the user? Ah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, Mark, thank you. Uh, it's it's it definitely is. Let's actually walk around a little bit. Um, and actually, what I wanted to test out, since we're here, let me also test out the binoculars. Uh, here. Let's see. Identify the instance type. Uh -huh. Interesting. Oh, what was the... Oh man, oh, there we go. I guess it was six. I forgot about what number that one was. All right, so kind of that's how it looks with the, uh, I was gonna say with the goggles, <laughs> with the, uh, um, with the binoculars. I think that's quite all right. Uh, as far as like the, the zoomification. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, so actually it, I was gonna walk around the perimeter, the, the fence a little bit and see how things are. And there's like a loan. Okay, the collisions for this mesh was something that I was like troubled by at one point, but it seems to be well, sort of okay-ish. Yeah, that's that's all right. I think we found a, a good a good balance of uh, of how bright the sun is. Uh, and thank you, Atlantica, for the suggestion last week. I I was kind of getting blinded by it as uh how bright it was but I think now it's 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 definitely definitely more realistic. Uh, I mean, you know, closer to what you would expect, I would say. Um Hey James, James, welcome, welcome. Um, you just, you just joined us towards the end of the stream, but, uh, but welcome. Um, so Mark, I'm guessing that substations are point of interest for, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, what I can tell, um, that's going to be somewhat related to, um, uh, to something that rhymes with sabotage, uh, for these stations. <laughs> Well, I guess it 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 rhymed that I said it what it was, but that's that's kind of what one of the missions is going to be around. It's sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, oh yo, it's a sabotage. Okay. Anyways, uh, hopefully YouTube is not going to hit me with a copyright uh, infringement or something that because of that. You never know. <laughs> um, so. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by, and uh, hopefully it was something interesting to see. Uh, appreciate all the ideas and uh, everybody chipping in. It's uh, it is how it is done. Uh, Enron, thank you so much for for the suggestion on the on the on the power lines. Yeah, that was uh, it definitely it looked weird, kind of tapping them onto here. So yeah, appreciate that, and. Uh, I uh, hope to see you tomorrow, same time. Uh, I'll, I'll just post it in Discord and uh, in um, you know just schedule it on YouTube. If anything comes up, I'll I'll let you guys know. So yeah, uh, you all have a have a great rest of your uh, of your Saturday, you know, or Sunday morning for that matter. And uh, thank you, James. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. If uh, not sure if you just joined, but uh, if uh, if you will tomorrow join earlier, then. 
perfect uh yeah so uh see you guys take care have a great like i said rest of your saturday sunday morning all right take care everybody bye